How important is it for a creative to have an agent or a manager? Uh, I think it's pretty, you know, pretty important. They help me. I mean, or, you know, uh, my manager helped me. Like, uh, he, he was the one pushing the script out there. You know, it gives you kind of a, um, what's the, I don't know what the word is for it, but I don't want to say official, like making it official, but like they're just, there's people I don't know. You know, and like in order to get into the door with these people, like, uh, you know, a manager or an agent is a good, you know, way to kind of bridge that gap. Because, you know, as someone who came in with, like, you know, I didn't know anybody. Uh, so, like, how am I supposed to, am I just supposed to show up? And, you, you, you know what I mean? It's just like you look like a crazy person. And it might work for somebody, but, you know, for me, they, they were able to push my, my stuff out there and get my name out there. So... Well, it could also hurt you. I, I did that when I was younger, and mm -hmm. I had my head served to me on a platter. So, yeah, you don't want to <laughs> overstep your bound. There's protocols, exactly. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. You, you know what I mean? So I was like, man, what happened? <laughs> it's like, that. <laughs> is oh, that an interview later yet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just came at me. Yo, wow, man, and yeah, who are I'm you? Sorry. And so, yeah, yeah. They, but, I, you know, being young and, and foolish and not mm -hmm. knowing what I was doing, I thought that was okay. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. so there, there are protocols. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you to get representation? When did I get representation? It happened around my first feature, Rocksteady Row. That was when, you know, my manager uh, approached me. So that was probably around 2017 or 18. Yes, yeah, so about five years. No, no. Yeah, about five years ago or so. And approached you in an email or you saw the person at a festival? Or? Uh, he called me because he was representing my friend. And then after I wrote the script, he called me in. And, and asked me, yeah. Oh, okay, so you he kind of already knew a your work bit. through your friend? And... Yeah, a little bit, yeah, yeah. What can an agent or manager do for you that you can't do on your own? Um, yeah, again, like, uh, you, you know, knocking on doors and getting the script out there. You, you know, it's like, it's, you're a team. You, you know, it's just like, there's only so much I can do on my own. You know, I'm not saying I can't send the script to people, but it's like, you know, how far is the reach, you know, that I have. And so uh, them as a team member to, to help you do that. And also, you know, they give you feedback on what the hell is going on in the industry, you know, and on how to like, not necessarily how to write your script, but to tell you, you know, necessarily maybe there's places where you can take it. You know, there are some places that don't make horror movies, okay? So like a second you hear, they hear horror, it's just like, well, we're not the place for that. You know, and even if they maybe are interested, it's like, it, you know, it's like you, you never know. It's just like, uh, so a manager helps, you know, representation helps to kind of get that in the right places in, in the further reach. Because, you know, you're only one person. So, you know, how far can you get? And even if you have the biggest name in the world, right? You know, it's like, and you know everybody, you know, even at the smallest, not to minimize their job to this, because they do a lot of other stuff. But, you know, it's like, well, you're going to sit in your room just like passing it around all over the place. Like, you know, that's, that's a lot of time, <laughs> you know. So but outside of that, you know, they do they help with that. They help with the reach. Um, they help, you know, shape your career that, you know, they connect and like uh, pretty important to me. Yeah. I'm wondering if we can go back to how you met your manager. So it was through a, a collaborator and yeah. then they got your number? Yeah, so um, I wrote a short film for my friend and uh, then the short film went online and like and it did pretty well. And that got him contacted by, you know, a manager. The manager saw it and had a meeting with him and then wanted to, to represent him. Um, and then I continued working with him. So by by proxy, I'm gonna be, you know, around this, you know, the manager for a little bit or my manager. So I was like, I was around. He was seeing me work with him, and then he finally read the feature that I wrote for my friend, and he was like, he liked what I did. So he, um, so he approached me on it. And so then you met in person eventually, or mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it just one meeting in person and you signed with him or you hadn't even met with him in person, you'd already signed? Um, it was a couple meetings. I mean, when he approached me, 
uh, be like, oh, I'd like to represent you, then yeah, that one was just one meeting. But I had met with him a couple different times because during the process of me writing the script, he was giving notes and things of that nature to me uh, on the script or whatever. And like we were kind of in conversation regardless. So because of that, we are, had already had a few meetings. We had already engaged a little bit off, you know, off the books or whatever. So uh, he already kind of knew me uh, by that time, he, you know, by the time he approached me to actually represent me. Do you pitch new ideas to your manager before you write them? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's pretty much part of the process. Like, I'll tell him what I'm thinking about, you know, these, uh, you know, because I have a, you know, I have a little book of ideas, <laughs> you know, and I'll be like, hey, these, these ones are kind of speaking to me right now. Uh, and, you know, we'll talk about it, see which one we feel like is, has the, the, the best shot and which one I feel the, the strongest about, you know, which I think trumps like which has the best shot most of the time just because I'm, you know, I'm going to ride it out, you know, because I love it so much. So, uh, yeah. And so when you run it by him, does he look at it for marketability and for sort of what he thinks some of these networks would want or also he gauges how interested you are? I think it's a combination of all those things. You know, I think he's thinking about all those things as I think it's part of the gig, you know, because he knows he's the one that knows these people who he's going to push it to. So he's going to have his ideas on why, you know, what he thinks is going to be a sell or whatnot, you know, or at least get you in the door, you know. Do you like gatekeepers or do they drive you crazy? <laughs> oh, what, like people who say yes or no? Basically, right? Yeah, um, I guess that's the definition of a gatekeeper. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you have to always have a complicated relationship with them, right? Because they tell you no and they also tell you yes, right? So, uh, yeah, so I mean, yes and no, right? No, I don't like, I mean, why would I like no? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like I wouldn't like that part of a gatekeeper. Of course not when you tell me no because I want to push the idea through. But, you know, when you say yes, then of course I'm going to like you. Like, you know, I, <laughs> I guess I have to be ambivalent about them, right? Well, we all are gatekeepers in a sense because yeah. to our own whatever it is. So yeah. you're a gatekeeper mm -hmm. and, and I'm a gatekeeper and mm -hmm. Dave's a gatekeeper. But then we also have to deal with other gatekeepers. So yeah. it's it kind of like we all become it depending on what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a tough job to like be officially be like, it, you know, the person who's doing that. It's, it's a tough racket. So um it's hard to say, like, I, I, you know, it's hard to say, like, oh, you, you know, you're useless or whatever. Like, you know, it's like, I don't want to say that because they have, like, such a, a tough gig. You know, they're reading a bunch of stuff, they're watching a bunch of stuff, and, you know, people are living and dying by their, well, their projects are living or dying by this person, and, you know, their career is living and dying by it, too. Uh, so, um, I don't know. Like, it's, a, it is, it's an interesting question, and it's like I have, I guess I have mixed emotions on it because human beings are so complex, they might just not, something as simple as not understanding your humor. You know, it's just like there, there's different types of humor out there. You know, when you're watching a Coen's Brother movie or a Wes Anderson movie or a Judd Apatow movie, like these are hitting you differently. You know, the type of comedy that these, that these guys are doing, right? But someone might not understand one of those types of humors and say no to it. And it's not has anything to do with you personally or with your craft, right? So, you know, how can I be upset at you for not, you know, it's like understanding something, right? So it, it, I think it's complicated. When you were living in or near San Bernardino County, mm -hmm. Redlands, did you think at one time you would be living in L.A. making movies? Was that always part of your plan? I mean, I think it slowly became part of the plan. I can't say that when I was young, I had dreams of living in LA and making movies because it, it came to me late. Like when I was 18 was when I had the idea of like, oh, well maybe, you know, because my mom gave it to me and she saw me like editing stuff and was like, you know, maybe you should do this. And so I was kind of pursuing it to see what it means. So, you know, but I didn't have any understanding of like, Hollywood is where it happens, right? I, was like, I, I didn't know that 
I just knew that, you know, I, I got to make stuff. And then as I learned more and chased and went to like community college and then I was like, okay, so now I'm going to USC. Now I'm in Hollywood. Now I'm learning, you know what I mean? It's just like the more I learned, the more I was like, oh, okay, so I got to kind of need to uh, be here. Need you know, <laughs> you know, I am here because I love LA and California, but um, yeah, it slowly became part of the the journey, you know, and became a a part of the goal, you know. So you went to community college in San Bernardino mm -hmm. for two years, and then you applied to USC, mm -hmm. and you knew okay, once you got in, you'd be living up here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. so you did two years, you got your GE requirements? That's yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. And how different was it? Was it was it the same, really, to go to a community college versus USC? I mean, community colleges can be great. It's yeah. A lot of times it's very similar teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was, um, uh, it was definitely different. Uh, like, you know, access to resources. You know, a huge difference, like with... You know, but as far as learning stuff, you know, even learning stuff is like a difference in, in resources on what you have, you know, like at, but at Valley College, you know, but some of the fundamentals of the stuff that I was learning in my general education and stuff like are still paying off dividends now that I didn't learn at USC. You know, like one, just one of the most important classes I took during, while I was at San Bernardino Valley, was a public speaking class. It's still paying off. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you know, it's still paying off. So, like, that wasn't something I got at USC. But, you know, it's like San Bernardino had a film program that was good that put a camera in my hand and taught me Avid. You, you know, it's like, so, like, I, I got those skill sets. Wow. But, like, at USC, you, you know, it's just like I learned how to shoot on film. You, you know, I learned more about lighting. You, you know, it's like I learned a little bit more about storytelling. I, you know, I, I was able even, like, the 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 craft of directing, you, you, you know, it's like I, I was able to have access to some of these instructors who uh, were not necessarily at San Bernardino Valley College, not only because of the distance, but just the, the resources. Um, and just like the focus to just be like, oh, I'm only here to be making short films. And then, you know, it's just like, and then at Valley College, it's more of like, sure, I'm, I'm taking the film program, but there are other people involved in it that are you know this is just a, a an elective they're not like you, you know what i mean so it's like i'm but like at sc it's just like nah you are with people right. who this is the this is the goal you you know we watch movies that's what we do you know we make movies <laughs> you know you're around right. these people who are just kind of like who are pushing you that way so um it, it was definitely two different experiences you know learning of course like the bare minimum is like yeah that's the same you're learning stuff but the experience of both of them are two, they were two different things. And what about alumni assistance mm -hmm. once you graduate? I mean, are, are there other people using each other for projects even after you graduate? Or most people are getting a job in the industry and so they're not making films? Um, yeah, I think a lot of people, I mean, it's like, you're saying like people getting jobs in the industry and not making movies, like, what do you mean? like? So it sounds like people, they're still making their own passion projects once yeah. they get a job in the mm -hmm. industry on weekends or whatever. Are, are, are you part of an alumni association or do they do they kind of have a placement program, There's something? Oh, I mean, I think I see had like a job board that I was using for a long time uh, that got me jobs and stuff like that, uh, which was cool. And um, I mean, definitely just like the people you meet while you're at school, like, yeah, they hook you up. Like a lot of my friends would hook me up with jobs. Um, and even now they'll like, you, you know, because you have the connection, like you guys are sharing connections as well, you know, to help each other out. So um, yeah, it's, you know, it <laughs> does this thing, yeah. Yeah, I can remember going to LA Festival of Books and I'll see at, at least two different film crews, you know, mm -hmm. just doing things and, and it seems like they're part of the film program there. Mm -hmm. so it seems like a very active campus and yeah, a beautiful yeah. place. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> I had a great time, yeah.